I've been playing the Xbox One X for a while now and one of the really interesting aspects of it is the fact that it has backward compatibility games which are enhanced or have 4K capabilities. And there's no question that now that these games have a revitalized community with reinstated servers and sharper, cleaner graphics, some of these games look drastically different and just play a lot better. Even the loading times can be much shorter. And one game in particular just looks so much cleaner now that I've played it almost a decade after its original release that still packs one hell of a punch today. And that game is Fallout 3. In a lot of ways, Fallout 3 was the rebooting of the franchise, at least in a gameplay perspective. Now, I've never played the original Fallout games, and so this title in the series was my starting point, which it has been for a lot of people. And due to the success of this entry in the catalogue of games, Bethesda and Obsidian Entertainment have galvanised the series as a staple of the FPS RPG hybrid genre. Starting the game off, we hear the distinct voice of Ron Perlman explaining the state of the world of Fallout. The year is 2277. The US and Chinese governments have waged war on one another, leaving the US in a recovery state from the atomic fallout of the last great war. Dotted around the country, several vaults were constructed to preserve fragments of society from the nuclear apocalypse. The player character is one of these lucky vault dwellers inhabiting Vault 101, and it just so happens we start off the game being born. Owen Liam Neeson is the protagonist's dad, Lucky boy! So after growing up and learning about how things work in the vault, Daddy leaves the vault and causes a bit of a stir. An inquisition erupts inside the vault led by the Overseer and we are forced to leave as well, leaving the sterile confines of our youth and embarking on a journey of maturity unlike any other. Outside the vault, a barren wasteland stretches in all directions. It doesn't take long to realise that the world that once was is now a bittersweet memory as the radioactive apocalypse brings reality to the forefront. We have only one objective, find your father. A goal which will spiral into a quest to save the so-called capital wasteland by purifying the native water supply. Though the true beauty about this game, much like its Elder Scrolls counterpart, is its emphasis on exploration, discovery and danger. Seriously though, just restarting the game and picking a different direction to go from where you start at the vault can drastically change not only your perception of the space around you, but also your experience and progression as you play, which is really cool. The world of Fallout 3 is very interesting due to its variety of inhabitants. From the simple raiders fending for themselves through brutality and theft, the super mutant menace terrorising the DC ruins, nomadic scavengers living off the land, exiled brotherhood of steel outcast, radiation scarred ghouls and tell mercenary thugs, the world is absolutely filled with factions, perspectives and storylines. There's even a great progression by which the game scales its enemy roster as you level up in the game to introduce tougher enemies, which really helps you feel like the wasteland is adapting to destroy you just like its thousands of other victims. Especially when the story picks up the pace near the end which introduces us to the Enclave, whose president is voiced by Malcolm McDowell, who clashed with the splinter group of the Brotherhood of Steel. Now, communities thrive at the expense of others, and more often than not, you'll be the one who meets out judgement, depending on your ethics, playstyle, and or incentives. And there are a ton of skills which can influence the world around you. You've got your pretty obvious skills concerning combat, such as melee weapons, fisticuffs, small arms, big arms, explosives, and even energy weapons. But we also have Bethesda staples such as lockpicking, stealth, speech, repairing, bartering, medicine, and... Uh, Science. Science? As in physics? Biology? Nope. Hacking. Does that really work? I mean, one minute you're reading a book which is so called the Big Book of Science, and all of a sudden we're able to hack into the old computer system of the Pentagon? Never mind. Plus, you also get a bunch of special attributes which allow you certain benefits not only to your unique skills, but also permit you to learn unique perks which further develop your character. If you have more intelligence, you'll earn more skill points every level. If you're stronger, you'll be able to carry more. More perception grants you to see undiscovered map locations from further away, and so on and so forth. Plus, some playthroughs can be completely transformed by the perks. I mean, one game you could get the animal friend perk so that mutated bears and dogs can come to your aid. Another you could get the cannibal perk and just, you know, eat all of your enemies to keep yourself alive. Some are even tied to certain quests in unique ways. 
For example, one NPC, Moira Brown, can give you this long-winded quest called The Wasteland Survival Guide. If you talk her out of writing the book, you get a perk called The Dream Crusher, which gives you a discount at her shop, improves her repair service, and reduces enemies from dealing critical hit damage to you for the entire game. Now that's top-notch character-based world building. And that's not even scratching the surface on the variety of directions both the story and the quests can go. Now a lot of people don't like the combat in this game and I get it. You can only aim down the sights of sniper rifles, they degrade with continual use, some enemies even on lighter difficulties can be bullet sponges, and there's also the VAT system which lets you pause the game for a moment to deal out critical hits more easily. I get it. Fine. But if you're honestly telling me you don't get a kick out of weapons like the Gatling laser or unique variants of the established weapons like the terrible shotgun, you're missing out. I love how when you start the game you're forced to use barely functional hunting rifles and sawn off shotguns and eventually graduate to meteor weapons like the minigun or pulse rifle. Though it's enough to put a bunch of people off because it's not the most polished system. But also the fact that you can get companions to help you on your journey is a nice touch. They're even aligned to your specific karma, so usually you'll find a companion or two who reflect what your playstyle is, which is pretty cool. Sometimes you'll even fight them depending on your actions. For example, when I assaulted Paradise Falls, a compound run by slavers with the sole intent of killing all the nasty people inside. Only to realise that one of the evil karma aligned companions lived there, and worked with my enemies to try and preserve their own motivations. And I'm just saying, there are very few companions in video games that you can get that are as effective as a friendly super mutant with a Gatling gun. Now I could probably talk about this game for hours just due to the fact that it's such a dense title. I've completed it several times and yet every time I replay it I find something new or try something different which changes up my playstyle enough to keep the game fresh. There are a ton of cool gameplay mechanics unique to the Fallout franchise, and even the little things such as the main currency being bottle caps just enables you as a player to immerse yourself into an expressive world filled not only with quaint joy and quirky moments, but also horrific scenes, heavy subject matters, and ideas which most games would hesitate at trying out. I mean on the surface it's a game about a young adventurer on a journey to save the DC wasteland, but it's more than that when you peel back the veneer of just another apocalypse game. There's human trafficking and slavery, extreme racism, wealth inequality commentaries, delusional patriotism, and to reinforce every idea there is a harsh undertone of brutality and violence. The world of Fallout 3 is unique, and although it's usually seen by some fans of the original games as a warped interpretation of the series, and many newer players prefer Fallout New Vegas to this title, but I hold Fallout 3 in a special place as a part of my gaming archive. With the new graphical update on Xbox One, this game just shines brighter than it used to, and although it's obviously a dated engine with noticeably worn graphics, it's still a ton of fun to play, even now. So if you've played Fallout 3 before and have the chance to, I'd say why not jump back into the Capital Wasteland one more time. Because listening to some old tunes on the Pip-Boys radio, visiting Megaton to sell some wares, clearing out a raider infested school, or helping a wastelander in need can be some of the most memorable moments in this franchise, which few games can rival. And as we all know, war, war never changes.